the ministerial level, all of us get along very well with each other. We understand our imperatives, our mutual imperatives. America is a very powerful economy, is a very big economy, but also a very sensitive country. India has an important role to play in the geopolitics of this region. It's the largest democracy in the world, a country which, as Honorable Prime Minister mentioned at the Bloomberg event, a country which offers the four important Ds, the demographic dividend, a democracy, a huge demand of a billion people aspiring for a better quality of life, and a decisive leadership. And I think all these four elements are important to address the destiny of the world. Neither government said there'll be a trade deal in five minutes. That was not us, wasn't Minister Goyle. So I think that was just speculation. We do think that there's no structural reason why there can't be one pretty quickly. We each know the other's issues we have for quite some little while. And pre-election, there were undoubtedly some constraints on India to deal with those matters. Now that the election has come and gone, <coughs> and Prime Minister Modi has a very clear, strong position in the parliament, should be a lot easier to take decisive action. There's also a lot of confusion. What is the U.S. position about trade deficits? We do feel our deficit is too high, and we intend both to increase total trade and reduce our trade deficit. But to us, there are three components of trade deficit. It's the third kind, which are the ones that arise mainly because of artificial barriers, protectionist barriers that countries have thrown up. That's the one that we are concerned with. That's the one that we are determined to reduce. And we think that we will make progress there. So I wanted to clarify that we have a very focused effort in terms of trade deficit reduction. India is very clear, considering our domestic political compulsion, that having about 120 to 130 million people dependent on small retail, which is about 50 to 60 million small retail shops through the length and breadth of the country, providing employment and working opportunities to 120 odd million people, which means effectively addressing the lives of one third or one uh, or nearly half the population of the country. Now this small retail is a very sensitive subject. My party, which is in government today and most of India, is very clear that we cannot let small retail die. And therefore we have restricted foreign direct investment in the uh, multi-brand retail sector at 49%. E-commerce is expected to be an agnostic platform. It's a, it's a platform to trade in, not a, and a platform which provides opportunities to buyers and sellers in an agnostic fashion to work together. It is not expected to become a platform either for predatory pricing. It is not expected to become a platform to use muscle power of large capital at low values being available, which allows companies to source cheap, get economies of scale in sourcing, and maybe offer discounts, which in some sense throw out small retail out of business. We are very clear about it. And that is a clear position of the government. It will remain so. And we've been clear about it for decades as far as the Bharatiya Janta Party is concerned. I think the e-commerce companies also have understood me loud and clear on this subject? Well, we understand the political sensitivity of the small retail people, also of farmers and other groups. In the U.S., conventional retailers have been having a very, very hard time. But we have made the policy decision that it's more important to get the most efficient form of retail commerce and ultimately, that probably is some combination of e-commerce and bricks and mortar commerce. So I think it's a question of how rapidly things change. If 100 years from now, 
India still has as many small retailers as now, it will have held back the growth of the country immensely. So I think it's a question of proportionality, a question of timing, and a question of balancing. I think there's another factor. E-commerce tends to result in lower cost of retail product to the consumer. And in a country that has relatively low consumer income, such as India, that's the flip side. To the degree that there is a structural issue which forces Indian consumers to pay more, there's a penalty being absorbed by the whole population, not just those who are employed in retail. So we, we think India and needs to manage, and I think will manage, the balancing act between these competing activities. But as was reported in the press yesterday, Amazon is spending one-third of what it spent the year before in CapEx. It probably would have spent a lot more in India if it didn't feel that there was a diminution in growth due to some of those policies. So there is also that cost to India by the policy. But at the end of the day, Indian government has to decide how they're going to balance those equations. We are making the advocacy point of view that I've just outlined. We will continue to do so. And as the diplomats say, we will have frank and mature discussions.